What's up people, welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with the MPC Key 37. We're gonna be showing off how to use it in a live situation. Let's check it out. So what's up, Chris here. Now, I've been receiving quite a few comments in the MPC Sounds video. If you haven't seen it, you can go check it out up here. Also, thanks to everyone because it seems to be getting a lot of attention, so appreciate that. But basically, I've received a few comments of people asking, how they feel this might cope in a live situation as opposed to maybe using any other type of keyboard or your laptop with you know midi plugins and stuff like this and i thought that was a pretty good idea because there are some fantastic sounds in here i really get along with it and i think it would be interesting to see how we could actually make this possible now there's a couple of limitations i'm going to talk about the pros and cons of this type of situation i've set up a project which is what i feel a pretty solid method of actually approaching this and going through with setting up all your live sounds i know some people were asking about how you might go about layering sounds and if it was just single sounds i don't think it would be a problem but with the use of layers it opened up a couple of doors which i want to talk about starting off I'm also going to mention we're on the new MPC 3.0 here. I'm really digging this. If you want to see a video on it, leave us a comment and we'll try get something going. I'm still getting used to this whole interface, but I really like what they've done with the update. I think it's super awesome. But basically, just to dive straight into it, you can see here, hopefully you can see on the screen, I'll just tell you what's going on. We've got a couple of tracks, piano, roads, strings, pad, synth bass synth keys another synth keys and a synth lead if i was doing a live gig these are some of the sounds i would probably reach for so i figured what's the best way to go about kind of mapping all this because it's fine if you want to use one sound at the time you just you just go on the track and you use that sound and everything's all fine and dandy but if you want the layer sounds i couldn't really figure out how to do that in here so what i've done is if we go into the mix section you can see this is what the new mixer looks like super pretty and if i go into io i've set these these are normally on auto so when you click on a track it basically turns the record arm on automatically and that's all fine and great but if you set it on merge then i press one note and let's see it on here they're all playing which is great because now it means if I go into my track mute, you can see I've got them labeled here as piano, road, strings, pad. Say I want a piano and a pad sound, I can unmute the pad. And now I have a nice layer going on there. And I think it sounds really good. If I want the strings, I can mute that, unmute the strings, and mute the pad. sounds super and so this is basically the method i figured would work really well all the midi is just playing through everything all the time and so i can just turn on any sound and i can layer but now maybe you caught a glimpse of what the issue with this is so what i noticed was if i go into the preferences and I click on here, you can see we're running the CPU really hot. I think we're on 75% on the, on the memory. The CPU is at 30%, but as soon as I get notes in, it starts coming up. And obviously all of these instruments are playing at the same time. So that's maybe where we're getting a few issues is the actual processing capabilities of this now i should also state some of the instruments i'm using on these are super heavy on the processing and you can probably go about this in a smarter way than i did because just to show you what i'm using on the piano we've got the fabric piano on the roads we've got fabric electric piano strings studio strings and on the pad the fabric xl plugin these are all super heavy on the processor so Maybe I could go and pick some, you know, smaller plugins. So once I put that Fabric XL on that pad, it was already giving me warnings like, hey, listen, you're pushing the CPU here. Just be aware of it. But then I kind of went a bit OTT and I added the Mini D, Tube Synth, the Jura, and again, another instance of the Mini D. But just to show how much better those synths han are handled by the CPU, they barely took up any space on the memory 
Whereas I had four instances of fabric and it was already a bit like, yo, you gotta calm down on the synths. So with that in mind, I could probably go change out one of the fabric synths for something else and you know, it will probably like it a lot better. Saying that, if I get too many notes in, it starts to freak out a bit. That's what I mean. So I'm playing all of that and it's just like, nah, bro, you're doing too much. Obviously that's an extreme example, but I'm going to show you some of the actual sound examples now of, you know, what we can get. Now I'm going to put this microphone on a stand and we'll dive into it. But before I do that, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment below on what you think about this. And with that said, let's crack on. Okay, so to the people that came from the MPC Sounds video, you'd know that I like to use a full range keyboard, especially for the piano sounds, it just gives me a bit more reach. And I think if you do consider using this for a live situation, it will really work to your benefit to have a larger keyboard just to, you know, really play all the range of the sounds. You can see in the back here, I've got this blue cable. That's just a MIDI cable that's going from here into here and I've got the sustain plugged in and all that stuff, so we've got full control over everything. I'm just gonna play some of the basic sounds and then we'll show layering and stuff like that and really dive into it. So this is the piano sound. Sounds really nice. In this instance, I'm using, let's take a look. We've got the fabric piano and I'm using the upright. I've pulled the formant up slightly, give it a little bit more brightness. But I really like the sound of this upright. You can always opt for the grand if you want that grand sound. I'll give you an idea of what it sounds like. Look at that low memory is telling me, see? Going OTT. I don't even think it's a huge fan of that sound because of how many samples we've got going on. But if I leave it on that upright, a bit softer, a bit more intimate, I really am digging the vibe of that. Now, again, we've got the roads, we've got the strings. I'm just going to go for the roads and let's hear what this sounds like. doing its job sounds really nice now i really want to show off the layering because this honestly when i was putting this together i was like this is going to be super powerful and i'm going to show you why so let's get the piano and we'll start with the strings i'll show you on this keyboard for the time being because i like to keep it pretty close together for these sounds Anytime you hear popping, that's the CPU freaking out a bit, so just be aware of that. One thing I realized is the piano sounds start quite high up, so I've transposed them all an octave down, as you can see here on the transpose. I haven't done that on the strings, so I'm just going to do it now, so they live a bit more in the same range, and it sounds like this. I love that. I think it sounds so nice, really fun to play, and just a great character. Let's check out this pad. Sounds a little something like this. Oh, didn't like that. 
Wow, that was bad. Don't want that happening during a gig. <laughs> All right, let's try one more time. Sounding really lush, but something I want to show off is the fact that with these Q links, right, you can see I've got a few things mapped here. I'm going to dive into what all of them are, but in this instance, I've put the pad cutoff up here. So if I wanted to really expand on that pad sound, Really nice. I love the fact that you have this possibility. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've mapped a couple of things. Some of them are for the synths, some of them are for the piano and the pads. I'm going to show off what I've done for the piano. So let's mute this pad. Now I've just got the piano. If I do this, add a little bit of delay in there. So there you go, we've got a little bit of that delay in there. Really nice that I have these quick access controls on the Q-Links. I've also, I mean, this gives us a good reason to dive into this top row of synths, which is what it is. I've set these four as the more kind of natural sounds, the piano, roads, the strings, the pad kind of lives in that category. But then we've got synth bass, synth keys, synth keys, and synth lead. What I really like as well about having the two keyboards, bear in mind, these are about the same action. They don't feel super different, but it does just expand the amount of keys that I have to play on. But what I really like, if, if I want to play more synth bass stuff, I've got this. And it's nice. I've got my, you know, all my controls all nice and close. I think if you're playing synth bass, Actually having the smaller kind of setup on a keyboard is just quite convenient. Whereas I won't be doing much stuff unless I want like a really big bass slide. But otherwise I'm keeping it all pretty close together. But then we have the synth keys. I'm using the, what is it? The, I'm using the tube synth on this one because I wanted to experiment with maybe a plugin that wasn't so intense on the memory. It is for voice, which I found a little bit limiting at times, but it is what it is. I did later find out that when I was exploring the synths, the Jura, which is kind of this Juno style synth, has a few more voices. Sounds really nice. I would probably end up using that. I might even swap out the Fabric XL patch that I'm using for the first pad for that because you have some super lush warm tones in there. So it's just all a bit of learning. You know, I think we, it's good to figure this out together. And so that's one synth key sound. If I go into the other one, this is using the Jura and you can hear what it sounds like. So warm. And we also have a little bit of a brato on there. But I didn't even mention the other uh, Q things I've got. So actually, if I go back to this original synth keys using the tube synth, we can show off this. And I've set up a synth pad wet. 
So that's just giving me a little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay. Super lush. But going back to the Jura, I think it does sound really lush. Really nice. Oh, I could play that all day. Yeah, so I'll probably end up swapping out this pad I have here with a Juro patch to see, you know, if I can kind of help on that CPU situation. But then last but not least, we've got the synth lead. And again, we are using the Mini D, I believe. Mini D, yeah, that's right. <laughs> This is nice. I really enjoyed creating this patch. Took a little bit of time fiddling with the plugin just to make sure I've got it all mapped how I like. But yeah, otherwise it sounds really good. I think it's a good contrast of different sounds to really give me something that I, f I can find really versatile. I think worst case, if I needed to expand on the sounds, I was having a think of how can I really expand on this without adding too many plugins because that's where things start to kind of mess up on the memory. So say in the Mini D, I've created a couple of presets. I've got, these are two presets that I basically modified to get a bit closer to what I was looking for. And I could just... <laughs> And that's maybe a quick way to swap between swap between two sounds and have everything there. Even if, say, I wanted to use the roads, but instead, maybe I didn't want the like a road, so I wanted more of I don't know, whirly, live whirly. Using the presets will save me a little bit of time for sure. With that said, this is kind of the method I found of a pretty solid way to set up the MPC for live use. Bear in mind, you will be fighting with the memory, as you can see here, rocking that 76% running pretty hot. And anytime I play a chord, the you know CPU blasts up to 50%. So this is definitely something you have to be aware of because depending how you go about creating your template will also vary how well your MPC will function. And at the same time, the last thing you want during a gig is that you're playing a nice piano ballad and the sound just drops out. This is something I've noticed a couple of times. I definitely got quite a few clicks and pops when I was building this up, and even now during this video, you've probably heard it popping in and out, but I think you can minimize that by being smart with your choices, using fewer plugins. I even have a little bit of master processing on here, which isn't necessary. I just wanted to see, you know, if I could really finesse this setup and see how far I could push this. So if I go into my outputs here, and go on my effects, you can see I've got a para, EQ, and a limiter. These aren't doing loads to the CPU. If I turn them off, it's not really adding much. But you know, then again, every bit makes a difference to the processing. So I could eliminate them, save myself a little bit more CPU. But really and truly, those first couple of um, instruments are really taking up loads of space. So whether I had to sacrifice, you know, I think for me, the thing I would be most likely to sacrifice would be this uh, Fabric XL pad. And actually thinking about it, let me just change it to a Jura because that was what I had in mind anyway. And what is the processing saying now? Look at that, 59%. So we've already saved, you know, close to 20% on the CPU, which is huge on the memory, should I say. So you never know, this might actually be the fix. So if I go back onto the pad, maybe not the preset we're looking for, but let's find a nice warm pad. Okay, so I found this patch transparency on the Jura, sounds really nice. I've even mapped the cutoff there. Let's try it with a piano. Maybe 
pull up that volume a bit. I mean, overall, it's performing a lot smoother without that additional plugin. But everything takes a little bit of tweaking. I think you can definitely use this for gigging. Just be a bit smart about how many plugins you're using. Try to finesse your sound. Maybe if you use it in combination with Ableton or Logic and you've got some MIDI keys, sounds or whatever, it will maybe save you that on here. But otherwise, I think it definitely does a solid job. You've got all the plugins and stuff if you really want to get creative make some lo-fi piano sounds with the Flavor Pro and stuff like this. It can be super versatile and I think there's all the value you've got there as well as being able to make music on it when you're not playing a gig. So how great is that? But yeah, that's about it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please feel free to leave us a comment below. I'd love to know what you thought about this. Would you use it for gigging at all or do you just want to use it to create music on? Either way, it's a great tool. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. The support really helps. And thank you to anyone who's already done so. Just remember, we've got plenty of videos on here about production. So feel free to check out what there is in store i'm going to end this video just playing through some of the sounds excuse any clicks and pops just is what it is for the time being until i've finessed this session and made it super refined and super efficient but that's it what's gonna be chris vella and i'll see you guys on the next one